Hello YouTube, Dave here again. I'm back with another second edition Pathfinder related video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pathfinder Bestiary 3. Uh, Bestiary, Bestiary, however you want to pronounce it. I'm inclined to say Bestiary, so I'm just going to go with that one. Uh, this is one of the latest books to come out for the Pathfinder second edition role-playing game. And this is one that I was really, really looking forward to from the moment I first saw the cover art uh, in like the Paizo's website upcoming releases section. And yeah, there's some interesting stuff going on here. Looks like there's going to be some very uh, interesting creatures uh, that we're going to have in this book. Uh, we're just going to flip it over here and just take a look at the back. So again, you get some preview of some of the different creatures that we're going to have here. And uh, this does say Triple Threat, which makes sense. This is the third uh, Beastary book. Uh, and on the back it reads, Over 300 captivating creatures and fantastic foes pack the pages of this compendium of creatures from the world of Pathfinder, with classics like Clockworks and Flumps, which is one of my favorite, just ridiculous creatures. Uh, returning favorites like Imperial Dragons and Mighty Titans, and brand new menaces from all over Galarian. This must-have Tome of Monsters is an essential companion to your Pathfinder games. And uh, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, spoilers, this is going to get uh, a pretty good recommendation from me. Uh, the U.S. retail price for this is $49.99. The Canadian retail price does vary depending on uh, the stores that you go to, how they like to do their uh, their markup or conversion. Uh, but typically, the price should be around uh, $59.99 to around $63, $64.99. Again, depending on conversion at the time that they uh, get the product in stock. Uh, so let's just sort of dive right into it, shall we? We're going to crack the cover here. And uh, just before we do that, though, I just have to mention I just love <laughs> the way that this looks. And uh, as soon as I actually got a good close-up look at what these things are and what they're doing, um, I got really, really, like, stupidly excited for what uh, what might be in here. So, uh, like I said, we're going to do our flip-through here. All right, so first up, we have our table of contents, which gives, you know, whatever's in here. And it also has our alphabetical listing of monsters, as well as a very uh, interesting-looking uh, creature that I th at first I thought was wearing a robe, but it's just, like, weird fleshy folds with uh, bloodshot eyes in it. And uh, yeah, it looks, again, really some really cool looking creatures in here. Uh, we have an introduction, which goes over how to basically read the stat blocks, uh, as well as to make adjustments, how to role play. So if you, um, going back to the adjustments, if you want to make them stronger or weaker, uh, it does give you information on how to do that. Uh, languages, gear, uh, as well as the sidebar icon information. So just sort of it uh, gives you a quick and easy way of knowing what the sidebars are about. Uh, we'll show them on some of the stat blocks here. But you have advice and rules, additional lore, locations, related creatures, and uh, treasure and rewards. So getting to the actual creatures themselves. So here we have a sidebar. So uh, just going back because so I have a really bad short-term memory. So that is a related uh, creatures icon there. Uh, as well as what we have there. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single one exactly what they are. We're just going to sort of uh, go through some of the names, and some of the names I'm not going to try to pronounce because I'm really bad at it. I say that every time, and then I still try to do it and make an absolute fool of myself, so hopefully this time I can actually stick to that. Uh, but this one here, the very first creature, is one that I immediately want to use in a campaign. And uh, going back to another uh, Paizo-related uh, video that I recently did, talking about the Age of Worms uh, adventure path, uh, the Abandoned Zealot is something that I think would fit in really well there. Uh, like, so I'm not going to go through every creature description, but there are a few that did, that did catch my eye. And uh, this is one where they are devout followers, uh, essentially that ended up worshipping some sort of false god or false cause. And as a result, they're denied the they're they're denied the afterlife, and they sort of come back as these uh, undead spirits. So, just again, really really cool concept, and uh, something that I immediately want to incorporate uh, into a campaign. Uh, then we have the adlets. Um, so these are just uh, humanoid creatures that live in cold climates. Again, I'm not going to go through every single. Uh, one, what they do. Uh, then we have the Agathian. So we have some different, uh, again, creatures here. It looks like they're sort of um, celestials uh, that take on different animal forms. I do like the uh, the raccoon one here. It reminds me of uh, a rocket from Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, draconic one. Now this one here is another one that I that again really caught my eye. This is the uh, Malgamite. 
And uh, basically what these are is they are individuals or humanoids or basically, I think they're typically spellcasters, I think, um, that um, when they went through or used teleportation magic, just something went horribly awry. So when they rematerialize, they just rematerialize as this twisted uh, creature that's like the body's just all like their joints are going the wrong direction. Um, you know, they're just parts are just completely, you know, not connected properly. It's just, again, such a cool uh, creature that I think it'd be a lot of fun uh, to do with the campaign. Then we have just a big old snake, well, medium size. Uh, androids. So androids are mentioned in the Ancestry Guide for the Lost Omen series. Um, I will be doing a review or a flip through of that book as well. It's one that I've had for a little bit now. Uh, but I do want to sort of get to this one first and then we'll sort of go there. But they did actually have androids as a playable ancestry. And so we actually have uh, an android stat block in here for the android infiltrator. And again, I'm not going to try to go through this one, but we have, <laughs> I'll try to pronounce that, but we do have a four-armed uh, primate. Uh, animated objects, so silverware, furnace, uh, this, you know, I, I love the, the animated uh, trebuchet. And then the colossus. Uh, the Arboreals, again, I really like these creatures. So these are uh, like essentially plant creatures, sort of, sort of like the uh, like the ants, uh, but not copyrighted basically. So it gives you a couple of different uh, types to use there uh, for your games. Uh, then the Asuras, uh, which I think ties into uh, well, this one might actually tie into, but the Asuras are essentially. Um, creations from divine beings that went horribly awry. There was just something, you know, just off about them, as you can see from some of the designs. Yeah, very, very cool artwork uh, in these books. Uh, I know I've said this before. Uh, I've heard people criticize the artwork in Pathfinder, but uh, man, everything that I've seen so far from second edition has looked fantastic. And uh, I really like the artwork in this book. Like the Azer here, uh, or Azer, however you want to pronounce it, the Fire Dwarf, basically. Uh, just, again, looks absolutely uh, just awesome. I, I, I love it to death. Now, Bobble Beast, the Bake, uh, Bakehawk? Beheaded. So this is another one that I really, really like. So the uh, Beheaded, you have the Flaming Skull, so like the, the Flame Skull type of monster, but you can also have the Severed Head. Um, but Beheaded, different ones will have different um, abilities that you can attach to them. So, for example, uh, they could be, like, uh, bleeding, so blood's coming out, which causes you um, to make a f uh, fortitude saving throw uh, or become second. Uh, the fiendish or giants, just, again, just really cool sort of extra little bit of uh, flavor that you can add to these to, to really paint uh, a very disturbing picture. But uh, I, I love the idea of, like, having, you know, the beheaded undead creatures beyond just the flame skull. So you can actually have one with like the uh, the flesh on it and again with the different uh, things you can throw on there. So, and really, really cool stuff. Uh, the bison, just pretty straightforward. Uh, blood painter. This is one, again, that I would think would be a lot of fun uh, to use. Uh, so they are, um, yeah, they're just, just bizarre creatures <laughs> and uh, I absolutely love it. So, and then we have the bone ship. So you actually have uh, something, you know, vehicle sized, uh, to, to go up against. So if you're doing a campaign that involves, uh, especially if you're doing any sort of like sailing thing, or if you're in, um, like the, uh, the river sticks sort of concept, um, it'd be really cool, uh, to use one of these in there as well. Boar worms and the Empress boar worm, just, you know, kind of gross. Uh, brainchild, again, really, really cool. So the brainchild is a is, is an illusion creature that essentially manifests from like urban legends. So if you have an urban legend of this like horrific killer, um, then you know if it spreads enough and enough people believe in it, then just you know these weird forces can actually manifest something like this. And it's just again a really really cool idea, and it ties in to one of the themes uh, in this book. So again, awesome stuff there. The Caligny, uh, the Calicang, and of course, you got to have the Camel. Uh, cavalry Brigade. Uh, so you have like the troops, um, which work, 
I want to say they work kind of like swarms. I have to admit I'm a little bit rusty on what they, on how to run them. Just because um, I've been involved in some Pathfinder 2nd Edition games as a player, uh, but it's been a little while since I've GM'd it. So I try to stay away from the GMing stuff because I don't want to step on the people running the game's toes too much. But again, it seems like a very, very cool concept to have. Then you have it again here with the City Guard Squadron. And we have our Clockworks. So Clockwork Soldier, Clockwork Spy. But my favorite... Uh, we have the Clockwork Mage. That's not my favorite. My favorite would have to be the Clockwork Dragon. And there are uh, some options you can use to have them malfunction based on certain parameters. So again, just a really cool thing you can th sort of throw in there. And the Cobble Mites. Uh, the Coral uh, Capuchin. I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, Corrupted Relic. Again, just some really interesting uh, creatures in here. We have Coaddles. The crab, so you got to have your giant crab. Uh, cross, uh, crossroads guardians. So the you know when you ever you have stories of like a regional protector uh, sort of thing or the celestial creature that aids the player characters and you know puts them on the right path um, towards their destiny sort of thing. That's basically what these uh, what these types of creatures are. They sort of manifest when they're needed. And again, just really sort of interesting concept. Uh, we have our demons. So we have the the dretch. I uh, love the dredges. Uh, I also really like this one here, the uh, the, the Brimoric. Um, the only thing I kind of wish is that they were not small size. I kind of wish they were like medium uh, or large. But again, that's something you could easily modify uh, for your campaign. But just again, such a really, just an awesome looking uh, design there. And then you have the uh, the Umox or the Omox. Uh, slime Demons. And we have our Devils. Uh, Hellbound Creatures, so it's something that you can apply to different uh, creatures. They give you an example here of the Hellbound Attorney. Uh, again, it's really kind of cool uh, concept. We have our Warmonger Devil. I actually really like uh, this one here, the the Dev, uh, sorry, the, the Dimavaga. I know I, I know I didn't say that right. This is why I don't try to do this too much. Uh, then we have Divs, or yeah, we have different types of Divs. Again, it's really cool stuff. Uh, Divine Morden. So again, it's sort of a template creature that you can apply to different uh, different things, different NPCs. And then we have the Imperial Dragons. And these things are really, really cool. Uh, they definitely have what looks like, um, you know, a very Asian uh, sort of feel to them, like the uh, the Asian dragon designs. But they look really, really cool. I love the, the Sea Dragon. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones in here. It's not my, it's not my absolute favorite one, but it's one of my favorite ones. Uh, then we have the uh, the Sky Dragon, uh, the Sovereign Dragon, but then we have the Underworld Dragon. This is my favorite one here, uh, is the Underworld Dragon. And again, something I would definitely want to incorporate into a, uh, a campaign. Uh, the Dramafur, they're creatures that essentially um, search the, the cosmos uh, or the different planes of existence. Uh, to find uh, dreams, um, people's dreams, and just weave it. Uh, into their, basically into their being. Uh, very cool concept, and they have um, abilities that sort of revolve around manipulating dreams, and just again, really, really cool stuff. The Elemental Wisps. I love the Fire, uh, the Fire Wisp. It just, it looks just, uh, I don't know, I just love the uh, the look on its little face there. Just It's just adorable. And this thing, uh, the Callborn, uh, so they are telepath, or sorry, it says here telepathic prophets and historians. Uh, Callborn gather in small cabals for protection uh, and camaraderie, using their collective brain power to unravel cosmic conundrums. Just such a weird and cool looking creature. The Festrog spawned from the corpse of those who died of illness or starvation. Uh, and twisted by negative energy, just again, cool stuff. I love that artwork, and I, I can't forget the, the puffer fish there because it's such a cool looking uh, puffer fish. And then we have the flump. Uh, so, this is 
I mean, they're such silly, ridiculous creatures. They're basically flying jellyfish monsters um, that if you flip them over, like flipping a turtle on their back, they become helpless. They have a, like a stink spray that they can use. Um, there was a running joke in uh, in my games with one player who just always has uh, flumps just surround, like just accompanying him and like you know massaging his shoulders with their with their tentacles. And I don't know, it's just it's it's probably it's it's silly, but God, I love these things, and it's cool to have them here. And yeah, foxes. Uh, the Gardu or. Gar Garuda, sorry, Garuda. I'm trying to read this through like the uh, the screen on the camera so I can make sure that it actually, you know, if I, if I can read it, then you guys can see it. Uh, so yeah, so the Garuda, I love this one here because it looks like a blue jay, and I, I really like blue jays. Maybe it's just because you know I'm not I'm not a baseball fan, but I am Canadian. That's our only baseball team as well. And then we have the uh, the Langul. Uh, giants, I you know again, I love the the cave giant. The desert giant looks really cool as well, but that cave giant just looks so awesome. The tomb giant looks great, and I love love the plague giant. Uh, again, just some really cool creatures to use. And then we have our man scorpion or scorpion man uh, creature here as well. Again, I'm not going to try to pronounce that because I'm going to just really blow it. So you know, I can't blow it if I don't try it. Um, globster. Again, just sort of a silly looking creature, but you know, cool nonetheless. Uh, I, you know, the fossil golem, I love this, it looks so cool. Um, again, just something I just want to throw into a campaign just because of how awesome it looks. Uh, mithril golems, uh, then we have the green man. Uh, so, green men are ancient, enigmatic, lesser deities of the primeval forest, having embodied or the living embodiments of nature and plant kind when a forest or other woodland terrain generates enough nature spirits uh, beings of the same sort of vital uh, essence that uh, embodies uh, leshies or answers to the call of community nature uh, basically yeah they're just uh, and creature you know rating 24 so these things uh, could really be like a campaign ending uh, creature to go up against we got gremlins and man the, the gremlin with like the the aquatic features, but the giant lobster claws, just again, just the, the artwork is amazing in this book. Uh, I cannot say enough good things about uh, the artwork here. Guardian Beasts reminds me a little bit of uh, Super Mario Galaxy uh, in the desert world where you can uh, capture one of these and, and move around as it. Again, just really, really great designs here. We have some hags. Um, hags are always great to use, but here's my favorite one, the blood hag. Um, they basically wear uh, one of their victims' skins, and they can travel around as that during the day. But at night, they like shed the skin, and they take on this uh, form that's basically just like this fiery orb. And yeah, awesome stuff, just cool stuff. Um, we have our Helwa swarm, and that one's carrying an eyeball. So, you know, there's that. And some sort of template-like creatures, house drakes, uh, house spirits. And here we have uh, the Yakumu, or however, again, I, I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Uh, but this is the thing from the inside of the, like, the table of contents. Uh, so it says, hundreds of bloodshot eyes peek out from under the fleshy layers of their skin. These hulking abominations, or sorry, aberrations, uh, covet knowledge and go to great lengths to keep what they know to themselves. So again, uh, neutral evil creatures, just really cool stuff here. I don't like things with spider legs. Uh, <laughs> the Kami. And again, it sort of ties into uh, one of the themes from, uh, you know, what the sort of the, the, the idea of uh, what some of the, several of the creatures in this book are based off of. Uh, then we have kangaroo, which is not, but it's an animal. But then we have the kappa, and I, oh, <laughs> I just love the, the face on it. It's just, it's so cute, but it's also, you know, can be a very terrifying creature with this little, uh, the bowl on its head uh, that's filled with water. Um, I think in the actual mythology, if the water spills from the bowl, it kills them. Uh, in the game terms, all it does is it reduces their speed. Um, I think down to five feet, and they can't move any faster than five feet per action uh, until they refill it. But um, yeah, again, yeah, really, really, uh, really, really cool stuff.
We got a multi-leg polar bear. And then we have Krampus. <laughs> uh, again, challenge rating 21, creature level 21. So again, something you could really build a, a high level uh, campaign around. Um, you could build an entire campaign around it, honestly, because uh, Krampus is, um, you know, this evil um, creature that punishes, you know, punish the naughty. Um, and, uh, you know, just views all humanoid life as naughty, uh, but it only, it only, it's only active one day out of the year. So you could really build a campaign, uh, where, you know, taking on this creature is sort of the, uh, the, the end goal or the climax. Again, just, uh, it, it's just one of those, you know, creatures that, um, I wasn't expecting to find in this book and it's super awesome to have it here. And again, the artwork just looks absolutely amazing for it and just some, just you know, it's it's. I don't want to repeat myself too too much, but there's so much just really good art in this book. And then we got more leshies. You can never have enough leshies. Uh, I love the seaweed leshy and the cactus leshy because the cactus one looks so angry, but it's got the little flower. It actually reminds me of uh, I forget the name of it, but from Digimon. Uh, and I wonder if that's part of the inspiration. I think it was Digimon. Uh, again, that's been a long time. <laughs> Living symbol. So these are like glyphs or graffiti uh, that can come to life. It's again really, really cool. The Locath. Uh, Lovelorn. Just a heart with spider leg. So I'm going to move on from that. The Mego. So we get some more Lovecraftian uh, creatures in here as well, which is great. Um, the Mabogo. <laughs> just a cool looking creature. Uh, the Monkey. We, of course, we have the Majestic Moose. And that is a reference for anyone who gets it. Uh, the Mordic. The Mosasaur. So the big giant uh, dinosaur. Uh, we also have the Tylosaurus. We have the Mothman. So again, you know, hopefully you're sort of sensing some of the themes of creatures that are in this. So the Mothman, um, you know, agent of fate. Uh, basically, it can steer people towards um, a disastrous prophecy. Um, which I guess is based on the, the actual mythology. We got our uh, mushroom people. The narwhal. The night gaunt. Again, I love the, I love the look design of that as well. Uh, night marchers. We got some nymphs. Giant uh, possums, the uh, Ouroboros, uh, and actually this reminds me of Resident Evil 5 because you have the Ouroboros um, program, um, but you have like the worms and uh, again, uh, definitely a campaign ending uh, creature here, it sort of uh, symbolizes uh, the embodiment of eternity, so it's just perpetually uh, eating its own tail uh, sort of thing, but just again, really, really cool. Uh, I love this as well. So the ob or ob, I don't know how you how you pronounce it, uh, but they're ancient denizens, the plane of shadow that appear as grayish humanoid torsos covered in translucent uh, funeral veils of shadow. Just again, so so amazing, like the art, just so good. Uh, the pangolin. So that's a if you've watched South Park, the the pandemic special, you know all about the pangolin and what they're capable of. Um, then the finaglin, which is the uh, the disembodied head with like the uh, the lungs and intestines still attached, just weird weird stuff. The phantom, uh, phantom beast and phantom um, knight, you know, just awesome awesome stuff here. Uh, Planar scions, which are also available as options in the advanced players or the uh, just the the ancestry guide. Sorry, uh, for the Lost Omens book, which I will be doing again a video on uh, shortly. But uh, again, just really cool stuff in here. Uh, some new Rakshasa types. Uh, the Rancorous Priesthood. Yeah, just some weird but just awesome looking uh, designs in here. I think we're coming on some of my favorites coming up here. But again, man, just again, I, the, the artwork is amazing. We have the Sasquatch, so we got the uh, the Yeti. 
Got some different spirits. The Shantank, or Shantak, sorry, not tank, tack. New skeleton, so we got the Harpy skeleton, the Tyrannosaurus skeleton, skeleton infantry. So again, you know, level 11, so you can, you know, if you want to run an undead themed campaign, stuff like that can come in uh, really, really handy. And the skeletons. Skin Stitch, so this is something that I've seen in a few uh, adventure paths, um, going back to the um, Rise of the Rune Lords, or Return, Rise of the Rune Lords, uh, the, the very first Pathfinder adventure path when they first launched before um, Pathfinder was even an, an actual finalized rule set. So you have like the uh, the, stin, uh, the Skin Stitch, so it's again, just really cool to have them here. I have been toying with the idea of converting that campaign to second edition and try to run it at some point, so uh, this will help quite a bit. Skull Swarm, Sorceress Skull Swarm, a Skunk, the Sloth and Snakes, Sphinxes, uh, Feathered Bears, Cunning Fox, so Spirit Guides, Cunning Fox. We got some different sprites, that guy looks determined. I, I love that expression. Uh, squirming Swill, uh, the Flying Squirrel, the Giant Flying Squirrel, uh, Squirrel Swarms. Uh, you don't want to mess with squirrels. Sword Keeper, Tattoo Guardian, Terracod Warrior, so again, awesome stuff there. Uh, the Terror Bird, Giant Toad. Uh, the different Titans. So again, I love seeing different types of Titans as opposed to just them being a single entry. Uh, then we have the, like, the Hecacon, the Heca, uh, I'm not, again, I'm not, this is the 100-handed one, basically. Um, so again, really cool to see here. 100-handed Whirl. Then we've got the gosh dang Tooth Fairy. And uh, so these were on the cover, and just I was so stoked to see what these things are. You can have a swarm of them. Uh, you can have just a, a one by themselves. The one by themselves is a negative one level. But, you know, if you get a swarm of them, they're like creature rating three, and they can just rip teeth out of your mouth and cause damage or cause you to have like uh, persistent damage. And their backstory are tooth fairies spawn when a child's tooth or less commonly an entire child, is buried in terrain rife with fey energies. Hatching from the buried teeth like larvae from an egg, tooth fairies build crude um, pliers from whatever they can find, then go hunting for more teeth, regardless of the owner's willingness. Just, just, oh, just beautiful. Just beautiful. Uh, trail gaunt, trilobite. Again, some things I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Uh, this guy looks awesome as well. And something you could build a whole campaign around. Just, just based on how awesome that artwork is. You could, it just gives you ideas. We have the Nosferatu vampires. Uh, as, long as, as well as their thralls. So they are essentially ancient vampires that can no longer create vampire spawn. Um, but they are, you know, again, ancient and powerful. And just look really super cool. Oh, there's one that I thought would be coming up on. I hope I didn't skip over it and not even notice. I may have. Uh, some more were creatures. Uh, wizard sponge. Sounds interesting. And yeah, I must have. But uh, here we have the worm wraith. So this again is really, really awesome creature. Uh, they have them in the Age of Ashes adventure path, which was the first adventure path. Uh, for uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, so again, just really, really awesome stuff. Uh, we have the great race of Yith, so the Yithians. Uh, just, again, love, love to see it. Some zombies, sulfur zombies, zombie dragon. Again, just some awesome stuff to, to have in here. And, uh, yeah, so we got our just uh, creature trait description, um, different uh, types. We have some rituals that you can use to summon certain creatures. And uh, yeah, creatures by level, and uh, so that is it. So um, obviously I missed the one that I was looking at, but um, this is a really, really cool book. 
Um, one of the things, so one of the obvious themes is that there are a lot of creatures in this book uh, based around um, like folklore. Um, there's a lot of like uh, Asian folklore uh, creatures. There's um, you know um, there's uh, folklore from you know different cultures. You have stuff like the the cap is really cool. You have some of the different spirit type of uh, creatures. Um, I, I missed it when I was flipping through. Um, I must have got distracted with something else. But there is the urban le like there's the urban legend creatures in here as well, like the the Mothman and the the Sasquatch. But they also have the uh, the spirit of the uh, of the beautiful woman whose face is covered, and she asks if you think she's pretty, and if you say no, she'll kill you. If you say yes, she removes the covering on her face to reveal that her face is like her mouth is just like all cut, uh, kind of like you know if you think of the Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker, but it's not like sealed up from scars. Um, she asks you again if you if you think she's beautiful. If you say no, she'll try to kill you. If you say yes, then she'll actually compel you to rip your own face open the same way that hers is, saying that she'll make you like her. Um, so yeah, just really really awesome stuff, and I love having like the uh, the folklore and urban legend creatures in here. Um, it's just really cool to see a nice cohesive theme. Uh, it doesn't have to dominate the book. Like I think it's it's spread out fairly well. There's probably tons of them. Uh, I will admit that I uh, that I missed because I'm not really up to date on a lot of different, um, you know, uh, folklore from different regions or even urban legends, really, truthfully. But it's just really, really cool to see stuff like that in here. But then you also have like the uh, the constructs, like the uh, mechanical the clockwork dragon. Uh, again, I love like the the tooth fairy. Um, you know, there's some Lovecraftian creatures in here. So there's overall there's a really, really great mix of stuff in this book. But uh, you know, I want to see. And and with Pathfinder First Edition, you had this with some of the other um, uh, bestiaries as well. Like one of them was very heavily based on Lovecraftian creatures, or you know the the, the Cthulhu mythos. Um, they you know that sort of dominated um, that uh, bestiary, and then you had one that was all about like the uh, the arch fiends and stuff like that. So with this one again, there's a very heavy influence on uh, folklore and um, urban legend type of creatures. But I think that that's awesome. Uh, I love the 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 one like the uh, the urban legend that can essentially just manifest into reality based on how well known the story is. So if you have like the you know the hook handed killer that goes up to lovers lane sort of thing, you can actually have you know that manifest. And I just think it's such a cool uh, cool concept. And you know seeing some other things like the uh, the skeletal uh, legion sort of thing that, you know, makes those really basic enemies um, a much tougher threat for higher level uh, characters. Again, it's just something that's really, really cool uh, to have in here. So overall, uh, the Bestiary 3 is, is I have to admit, it's it's my favorite one of the three so far. Uh, I mean, the first Bestiary was, you know, a very basic uh, essential creatures. And, the, you know, I totally understand that. The second one also had some amazing stuff in there as well. Um, you had... Uh, like the Jabberwock from, uh, like, um, you know, Alice Through the Looking Glass and stuff like that. So, again, really, really cool to have that. But I think that they really ramped it up in this book here. Um, just an awesome job. And, again, the artwork all throughout is fantastic. Like, there are creatures that I never had heard of before or, you know, never even thought of before. And just looking at the artwork makes me want to try to design an adventure around them. So uh, just flipping through the book, um, you know, really sort of sparked that desire. So, uh, you know, I cannot say enough good things about it. Um, you know, again, one of the best uh, monster books that I've seen in a very, very long time. And that's not saying that the first two bestiaries were slouches by any stretch of the imagination. They were both amazing books. But this one, I think, is just a little bit better because there is a little bit of a stronger theme at least that I can identify going through it, and uh, I really appreciate that. So uh, definitely check this out if you are collecting or running uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Uh, this is just such a good book to have. Um, I cannot recommend it enough. So, uh, you know, definitely, you know, head to your local game store when you get the chance, and uh, I do recommend picking this up. Uh, you know, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Uh, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Take care.